Welcome to Revlog, where Pastor Aaron has a song for us today. You promised it last I week. I did. And Pastor right. Brian is going to control his tongue. <laughs> so we're, we're grateful. Hmm. I mean, is, isn't this the Kurt Kaiser text? It only takes a Oh, my word. To get the fire going. Pass it on. Pass it on. That's right. I mean, it's... Do you so, know that so he flips it? Well, it's kind of right, out of context yeah. a bit. But well, I mean, that's what I mean. It is out of context. Yeah. And correct. soon all those around that's can right. warm up to its glowing. But that's I don't know. Is an analogy ever out of context? I mean, yeah. he just he uses his inspiration. That's, that's right. how it is with God's love. There you go. <laughs> Once you've experienced it. Well, the thing it. is, I know that... I really don't know the tune very well, but I knew, I, I knew the... the the title and yeah. the first it's line. It's pretty famous so. in Baylor circles. Ah, uh, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, uh, yeah. Yes, it I've, is. I've got an incredible mm. Kurt Kaiser story. Do you have a minute? Sure. So, I mean, so my last... always have a minute for Kurt Kaiser. Uh, come in close. My la- <laughs> the, uh, story time with Aaron. <laughs> my last day at Baylor University, as I was driving down here to come in view of a call, right. um, uh, acapella choir was on stage at Jones Hall, and they were recording something and taking a break. And, and so Kurt was speaking to the choir and just, just visiting. And so um, uh, he went to the piano and just started playing and just started, mm-hmm. you know, improvising. And he was he was improvising on "God Be With You Till We Meet Again." Mm-hmm. And so it was it was it was God's just really saying, you know, this chapter is over for yeah. me to me, yeah. wow. and a new one's about to begin. So that's a very dear. Yeah, it's story. an incredible Kurt Kaiser well, story. And so for those that may not know this Baylor legend, I give us just the brief biography. Well, I, I honestly, he's just kind of a, um, at the forefront of a singer songwriter kind right. of contemporary Christian. He, there are a lot of a lot of what we know as campfire songs. Um, right. Pass it on, being well. I was going to say of, contemporary Christian well, may have been a well, little the, before. In the, in I guess it matters how you define that. that. I mean, yes, it's, the early seventies, late sixties. That's right, early seventies. So he was are a you powerhouse. are you blaming him for contemporary <laughs> Christian music? Is that? Oh. <laughs> There is much blame to go around, but it doesn't rest with Kurt Kaiser. Uh, he was he he did musicals, yes, right. uh, cantatas uh, at, at the forefront of of uh, the, the Jesus movement. There was there are a lot of music of of that era, and yeah. and it just yeah. And he was even till the last several years, he was um, yeah. playing at a church in Waco, right, and, right. and so Day Spring, I think. Day and and right. he he start he was for years at Seventh and James, and I will say he was grounded in. He was highly trained. Absolutely. Uh, and he wasn't just some, you know, hack musician. I mean, he was really highly trained, and he brought all of that to the church. And I, I think he enriched No, he, he was beloved. At, yeah, he really was. At, right. at Baylor. He worked, yeah. he, was, he, he worked for Word Music for years yeah. when it was headquartered in Waco. And, right, uh, right. I don't think that has anything to do with James I, I, 3. I was going to say, I, so, so yeah, we come to Reverse this yeah, week. We're but in it James only takes a three. spark. That's right. <laughs> As we come to the sex, there is a wealth oh, my word, yes. of wisdom and information here. You, you know, we've said a couple of these texts in James. You, you could you could take a month mm-hmm. on on any one of these. I think this is another one. And even just as it begins, he says, "Let let not many of you become teachers." Yeah. And, and there's a whole lesson in that. And then then we get into the tongue and the analogies that that he gives us here that are perfect and and um, poignant. But Aaron, as you work through all of these these things, yeah. what what held your attention? Well, where did your heart go? I, I will say, as an educator, as as a, when I was in the classroom as a Christian educator, this was one of the first things. And I know that that James was speaking not just to to public school classroom teachers. Uh, the, the the idea of teacher was kind of had a greater context to it. But I've always held that that verse in real high regard. Just saying. It's one thing to be trained. It's one thing to to know how to do do these things. But when you put yourself in front of people to help lead them, mm-hmm. that you should you should be held accountable for 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 what you say, mm-hmm. and yeah. and and it's it may not always be fair the the judgment that comes back at you from the world. But if you're true to what you've been called to, if you're true to the word of God, if you're true to to who right. He has created you to be. I mean, it's it's going to come, but you're just you got to make sure that your rudder is 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 fixed, and that that um, and and whatever you say is true, true, true. Yeah, that's, that's right. We're we're all held as this passage unfolds. We're all held accountable for our words, but but teachers and and the words in a teacher's mouth hold a special place and, and a special accountability because you're instilling that yeah. in 
in, in a pupil and mm -hmm. um, you have to be very careful with yeah, what you say. Yeah, yeah. yeah, so this story time again, I'm sorry, but, but one of the first uh, principals I ever worked for, I mean, he, he would sit, sat across from me and he, he told me, you know, I, I don't sing. I had a kindergarten teacher told me, you know, I, I couldn't sing. And so for 60 years, this guy went through his life thinking he couldn't sing because, because, because what one teacher told mm. him, and, it, and, wow. he, and I, I'm reminded again and again and again what the power of words can have on young people in, in particular. And so, you know, when we teach, and, and I'm, I'm including all of us in this, yeah. that, that we can't be flippant about, about who people are, who God has created them to be. We, we speak, we speak directly to, to that. And that's why you must be careful about sarcasm. You must be careful about, you know, about things that are just not well thought through because it matters. Yeah. Yeah. So, Brian, as you came to this text, James, James 3, what did you hear? Well, I, I kept hearing over and over again the old saying, you know, nobody's ever heard a bad short sermon. You know, <laughs> I, I just keep thinking about that, especially with the, the teachers and, you know, mentioned and all that, which by extension, let's be honest, means preachers. Sure, too, you sure. Know, so. yeah. uh, but the, I, I think all of us have experienced a torrent of words from a person who has to be the smartest person in the room, you know, and, and we're off put by that. Uh, we've, we've heard, you know, we have the, the word lecture has taken on a bad um, connotation just because it's, it's more words, you know, of somebody that's supposed to know better, right. you know, we have mansplaining, you know, all the stuff, you know, that, that uh, we, we uh, associate with words. And many, many words, uh, there, there's a reason that the, the Bible says even a fool is thought wise if he holds his tongue. You know, that, that's mm -hmm. uh, because words uh, will, will crowd, you know, um, the life out of a room. But at the same time, the reason they can do that is because they do have power. This is the way that God created the universe. It, it's... It shouldn't be lost on us that he, yeah. he spoke a word. Amen. And then he imparts to us a kind of power like that. Right. We can speak things into being. This man for 60 years, he was spoken into being as a non-singer, mm -hmm. you know, by a word. And then Jesus comes along and he says, you can use words to obfuscate. You can use words to... Uh, steamroll over people's thought process and short circuit that. And he says, that this is why you should uh, not use a lot of words to hedge your bets or to gain power. It, the way Jesus puts it is, don't take oaths. And uh, I think a lot of this time is, uh, a lot of what Jesus was saying was, these are words that we bring along to back us up, you yeah. know, to back up our claims. And he says, just say yes. Just right. say yes or no right. and let that rest. Mm -hmm. uh, because yeah. otherwise, you're, gonna, you're going to be using words improperly. You can't be trusted with that power. Wow. Yeah. So just rein it in. Yeah, and, and you're, you're right. You're looking at this text that, that our, our words do hold great power. And in that way, we, we have a responsibility with them oh, to, to use them do we ever... to encourage and, and build people up That's and right. to uh, discipline when necessary. But they can, uh, our, our words can be mighty. Um, and the Lord uses us to, to speak things into existence yeah. that way. And in and, and, and all of his, uh, James's analogies here are just, just perfect. When you think through oh. the spark, the rudder, uh, the bridle, um, all, all of those things. Those are awesome. I mean, th those exact, those are things that are very, very powerful and yep. they're perfect analogies. And, and I, I just, I do want to say that whoever came up with that sticks and stones thing didn't know what he was talking about. I mean, yep. that words do hurt and they are much more powerful than right. anything you could throw mm -hmm. at somebody. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. So Aaron, as you came to this text, uh, what question? So I would, I would balance what, what we studied just a couple weeks ago. Am I slow to speak? If knowing that my words, every one of them, have, the, the, have a laser-guided mm -hmm. power, mm -hmm. you know, am, I, am I then slow to hold my tongue and really say what is necessary and not just be glib? Um, and, and that's, 
it's something that I need to keep in front of my myself at all times. Yeah, yeah, that's right. That, that's good. So, Brian, as you came to this text, what, what question came to mind? Think about it. <laughs> there you go. I, I was kind of hoping he would just be silent today, <laughs> that, he, that he wouldn't say a word. <laughs> I've never agreed with you more. <laughs> <laughs> would, would people around me be better off if, if I said nothing Wow. for a day? I mean, really? Yeah. Um, that what, would, what do you think? What do you, I, I think? Let's explore that question. What well, do you think? Well, I think, yes, I do think so. I do think so. Uh, because I, I might have occasion to pay attention to what's going on with them. There's a reason that people have vow take vows of silence. Yeah, and know? we talked about this a couple of weeks ago. I think you're right. There is a time and place for vows of silence, mm -hmm. and it would be a good spiritual discipline for us to try those things. But but I will say that it, that's limited. It, it helps us better understand the, the power of our words because, to your point, there are people in your life today that you need to speak life into and encourage, and you need to tell them um, the truth. And you need to encourage them. And um, being silent, we miss some of those opportunities where we are called to speak with grace and, yeah. and love in the spirit. And so there's, there's a time for both. But I think there is a time to, like you said, for go without talking for a day yeah. and, and see what we might learn. You, you have to stay away from drive throughs if you're going to do that. But I think, I think wow. that is a, wow. it's a powerful way to uh, live. Did he just take us to McDonald's? He did. <laughs> he did. We're, we're, tr we're trying to walk I into know. this retreat that we're going to yeah. and, and find spiritual hope and, and the Lord. And <laughs> Me Brian. too. Bri Brian goes to fast food. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, and, and to that end, I, I think you, boy. you, I don't, I don't, oh. <laughs> we, don't, we don't need to give any free ads on here, but anyway, ba no, back around. Brought to you by they have a great burger. <laughs> and our, I know, our, they do. It's amazing. You yeah. know, I, I'll, I'll say I know that that our, um, our 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 officers, our security officers around here love Burger Boy. That, that's who got me onto Burger Boy, uh, and it's it's fantastic. The Hufties love Burger Boy. Yeah. Can I can I also just say, just kind of to, to bring us back to spiritual things? <laughs> okay. Okay. The the opposite of this, just in knowing the power of words, and I know this myself when I'm somewhat on unstable ground maybe mm -hmm. i've not thought through right. like when i was teaching sunday school and and i know somebody's going to challenge me on something i just fill the space with words and don't right. give give freedom and i just mm. just talk to talk talk to talk and and just and what i know what i'm doing i'm i i'm uncomfortable because if i'm challenged i'm not going to be able to defend yeah. very well sure. and so so it's just I think I'm very well aware, aware of the power of words, and sometimes I just I just spew them rather than right. let them sit and, and have thought through before I even start. Absolutely. One of the things that processing in uh, disciple making, and this is something um, Kirk Freeman, who I've worked with a lot on this disciple making, he often says is that, you know, in the initial stages of disciple making, you do need to kind of set some tone and and speak a little bit more but you really need to to back out in the disciple making and and not just be the answer guy so if you're discipling somebody it's not really your role just to give them every answer um and mm -hmm. and oftentimes that means being being silent yeah and even when questions are asked um leave it there instead of providing the answer and, and sometimes part of disciple making is not answering the question and letting the person find the answer mm. themselves. And one of the, the best things that we can do in disciple making is help people understand how to seek the Lord and find answers themselves rather than us just giving it to them. But, but to your point, for ministers, that's part of our ego is mm -hmm. that we have the answers. And, and there's a couple of things we need to have our ego put in check with is, one, we don't have all the answers. And two, uh, sometimes it's better for us just to be quiet and not answer the question, even if we do know the answer. Yeah. This, I think that would attune us more <clears throat> to prayer uh, and, and understanding the dynamics of prayer because this is exactly how God does with us. Mm -hmm. Often He is silent and we think, well, well, 
why are you being silent? You know, or you know, or Jesus it, would lead them to a question and just leave it there, just kind of like you said. He would not necessarily right. provide them with and the answer. It, that's exactly right. And, and we can say we could see that same dynamic play out with somebody that we're talking with if we will hold our tongue. We can understand that a little bit more. I think. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. This was a good one. It was a good one. And we would love to hear your comments on this text and the conversation if you would comment below. You want to go to Burger Boy?